This is a brand new Reveal, the latest endurance bike from German company Rose, launched earlier this year. Really good looking bike, really good value for money, really modern details as well. In this video, I'll go through all the details, we'll go for a ride, and at the end, I'll give my verdict on this new bike. So let's roll the intro and take a closer look. The Rose Reveal is an endurance bike, which means comfort is right at the top of priorities. So it needs to be a smooth ride on rough roads. And there are several ways they've tried to achieve this smoothness. Number one is increased tire clearance. So these are 28s fitted as standard. They're spaced officially for a 30 mil wide tire, but you probably go wider, 32 maybe at a pinch. So it's fairly generous, but it's not the most generous. Many new endurance bikes go much wider 35, 38 in the case of a Trek Domani, but still probably plenty wide enough for most people, but not the widest in this category. And then they paid particular attention to the seat post and the way it fits in the frame to give more seated comfort over rough roads. So we have a D-shaped seat post and drop rear stays, two features that are really common on modern road bikes these days. They lowered the seat clamp, so it's just above where the seat stays join the seat tube, and they've used a plastic bracket on the back of the frame which all contributes to an increased amount of bending force available for your seat post. So simply put, you have more seat posts available to bend from the top of the rear stays, like we have on other bikes, and that all contributes to more movement at the saddle back and forth when you're riding over a rough road. And when you're riding over said rough road, you can really see the saddle moving back and forwards between your legs. Um, it's like most other endurance bikes in the category. It's not alarming at all, you get used to it, it doesn't feel strange at all, but it does deliver a smooth ride and takes the edge off really harsh roads. They've also given the seat post a 25 millimeter setback to put more of your weight over the back of the bike to increase the amount of bending force at the seat post. But then they steepen the seat tube angle to about 74 and a half, which is steeper than the standard 73, to make sure you still have a, a short reach and put more weight over the front of the bottom bracket. So that's comfort ticked, but then so is stiffness because an endurance bike still needs to deliver a sporty, snappy, agile responsive ride so we have an oversized press fit bb86 bottom bracket big chunky chain stays an oversized down tube and a beefy head tube up front so while it should give that magic carpet ride it should also be a snappy responsive fast handling bike as well one of the hot topics in the road cycling market at the moment is cable routing and it seems that the requirement for many customers buying a new bike in 2020 is internal cable routing. Basically, the customer for a road bike in 2020 doesn't want to see any external cables. So manufacturers are now trying to integrate all the cables into the frame and the front end to give that clean, modern look that many customers clearly demand. The Rose solution is quite a clever and simple one because one of the benefits is you have a standard handlebar and stem with a cable going underneath the stem into a specially shaped steerage tube spacer and then into the frame. And how we've done this is we've used a normal tapered fork steerage tube inside an oversized head tube. And the space between the steerage tube and the head tube is where the cables go into the frame and then down to the brakes and the rear derailleurs and so on. So it looks a fairly simple and clean solution to putting all the cables inside a frame. Yes, you have some exposed cables underneath the stem, but it's not as extreme as some other bikes, like a giant TCR, for example. You can fit a normal stem and handlebar, so no worries there with changing the fit. And it should be easy to look after in terms of maintenance as well, but that's a long-term uh, question to answer. This new reveal is only available in carbon fiber, and there are two levels to choose from. At the top, there's the reveal six, which uses posher carbon fiber for a frame weight of 920 grams. And there's the Reveal 4, which is more affordable thanks to a use of different carbon fiber, and that weighs a claimed 1,020 grams. So only 100 grams between the two frames, and they use the same 380 gram fork. The new Reveal is one of the few endurance bikes on the market to be released in 2020 with the option of rim brakes, but most of the range, it has to be said, do have disc brakes. I think there's only one rim brake option in the range, but it's there if you want it. 
So for disc brakes, we've got the very common 12 mil through axles front and rear with a DT Swiss lever and flat mount brake calipers with the hoses inside a frame and a fork. So very clean, very normal. Um, yeah, disc brakes are a hot topic for many people, but it seems like endurance bikes have been going disc brakes for many years really. And we're now seeing aero and road race bikes being given the disc brake treatment. So there's an option there if you want rim brakes, but not as many as you might have seen a few years ago. I mentioned at the top of the video that road bikes weren't always that great looking, in my opinion, but I think they're now doing a really good job. And this frame looks really cool. We've got a lovely glittery paint job. We've got a nice font treatment on the logo. Um, it's not too in your face or loud with logo placement like some bikes. Some people commented on the black fork over my Instagram page, and I'm not too fussed about that, but maybe a color match fork would be better, but it matches the other black accents on the frame. It's got a nice proportion, nice balance. I like the shape of the tubes. It looks sporty, it looks fast. Yeah, it's a really clean looking bike. Endurance bikes offer a great blend of comfort and speed, and if new reveal, it's a great example of this genre. It's both fast and comfortable and deals with crappy roads here in the UK extremely well. Firstly, the comfort is superb. You really feel the benefit of the big tyres and the bendy seat posts on the bike. and really takes out the harshness on rough roads and potholes and even light gravel as well. The front end isn't quite as smooth as the back end though not quite as balanced as some other endurance bikes. Where the bike really impresses is in the speed and responsiveness of it, all thanks to the oversized frame. There's no sense of flex when you're putting the power down, so when you're climbing up steep gradients or you're attacking sprints, it really responds well. Very stiff frame, very efficient, and it gives quite a race bike-like handling to it. And that's helped by the geometry, which is a little bit shorter in the wheelbase and steeper in the head angle than most endurance bikes. So it does cut closer to a race bike than many endurance bikes. The weight is also agreeable when you come to steep climbs. Um, it's light for the money and the specification. And you've got a wide range of gears to really help you on the steeper gradients. You really find a nice cadence and spin away until you get to the summit. And when you come down the other side, you've got these hydraulic disc brakes that give you plenty of power. And they've been fuss free, no noise, no squeal, just work. And one thing of braking, it's uh, fantastic, you really get used to that. The great benefit of hydraulic disc brakes. It's nice to have a bike with such good finishing equipment as well. The Conti GP5000 tyres are a highlight. They're really grippy, fast rolling and durable. And touch wood, I've not had a puncher yet. I like the Ritchie handlebar. It's swept back, the shortening reach. It feels great in the drops as well. And the Sedatale saddle is not my favourite, but it's a, a well-known saddle brand. And you may like it, you may not, it depends on the on the shape of your bum. So there's a lot of competition in this endurance bike category and they're not all the same. They follow a similar blueprint in terms of offering more comfort than a race bike, but some lean closer to a race bike. And it does remind me a little bit of the Canyon Enduro Race, an endurance bike that leans closer to a race bike in terms of geometry and the handling than something like a Trek Dimani, for example, which is almost a gravel bike these days. So if you want an endurance bike that delivers comfort, but is sporty and fast handling like a race bike, then the Rose Reveal definitely delivers that sort of performance. I've been really impressed with the bike. Um, it really delivers and punches well above its price tag, offers a lot of performance for the price. It's just a really nice riding bike that does what you want, deals with my rough roads here really well, but it's sprightly and handles really nicely in the corners. And it looks fantastic as well. Did I mention that already? I think it probably did. So the shame rows don't get more recognition. I think they deserve more recognition, especially now they put a lot of effort into how the bikes look. So you've got a great looking bike, great value for money and great design. Very modern and a good rival to more mainstream popular bike brands in this category. I've ridden quite a few Rose bikes over the years and they've always impressed. Great performance, ride quality, great functional design, very modern and great value for money. But the looks, if I'm honest, have always left me feeling a little cold. A bike you buy with your head rather than your heart. It's almost like they left the looks to the last minute, spent five minutes giving it a paint job and then sent it out the doors. But in recent years, that has all changed and they've really upped their level, really raced the game 
And as you can see, this bike looks really cool. Great paint job, very modern, clean design, a good rival to more mainstream brands out there. So I think they've done a really good job. And this bike comes in three colors, not something that many other bike brands offer. So that's pretty cool. And another unique feature, you can customize the spec of the bike on most bikes in the range that suit your budget. So upgrade the wheels, tires, handlebars, and stems and so on. Okay, let's talk equipment and components. And this bike here costs 2,268 pounds, but you do have to factor in shipping costs because they sell direct, no shops, remember. So here in the UK, that's about 35 pounds. So small cost to remember when you're looking at these bikes, considering the options in the market. And we've got a Shimano 105 mechanical shifting hydraulic disc brake group set, which is simply put, one of the best group sets on the market. All the performance of Ultegra and Durace pretty much, but with less cost and a bit more weight. We have a compact chain set, so 50, 34 chain rings and an 11, 34 cassette, which I've been finding helps on heels a huge amount. The bike isn't that heavy at 8.3 kilograms, but that wide range cassette gives you plenty of scope to sit and spin on longer or steeper climbs. It really makes climbing a lot easier. There's plenty of range at the top end when you give it the beams as well, so really good group set. And the brakes with 160 mil rotors front and rear, plenty of power, no noise, no fuss. Just, I love the simplicity of one finger braking in all situations, so it works really well. Onto the tires, and this is something at this price point that you commonly see a bike brand cutting corners on, but not in this case. We've got the excellent Continental Grand Prix 5000 tires in a 28 millimeter width. So an excellent tire. They're clincher tubed type tires, not tubeless, but a rigorous set of tires. Um, fast rolling, grippy in all conditions and durable and long wearing as well. So no need to upgrade the tires, which you often have to do on a bike of this price to get the best performance out of the bike. The tires are fitted to the company's own, well, Rose's own R30 disc wheels. So an aluminum rim, external nipples, 30 millimeters deep, nice sealed hub bearings. They're also tubeless ready as well. So if you want to go tubeless, ditch your inner tubes, you can do that in a future upgrade, no problems at all. And the wheels weigh claimed 1,650 grams. Now a really smart set of wheels. They work fine, they give good performance. You could upgrade if you want to save a bit of weight or get a posher set of wheels, which you certainly could do with the savings you get on this bike compared to a more mainstream rival. So a wheel upgrade down the line would be quite a good thing if you own this bike. But starting out, a good set of wheels, no problems at all. And where we often see bike brands use their own brand components to save money on the stem, handlebar, saddle, that's not the case here. We're Rose preferring to use branded, well-known components, and that's a really good thing in my books. We've got an excellent Ritchie stem and handlebar, and the handlebar's got a nice sweep back to shorten the reach. It's a really nice shape in the drops as well, really comfy setup. I really like Ritchie equipment. Um, Ritchie, or well, Tom Ritchie himself, has a great reputation, and uh, really kind of almost class-leading components in terms of their reliability and performance. So excellent equipment there. But that is the equipment on this bike, and on this size, 55, weighs in at 8.3 kilograms on my scales, which is not light, but I think they're pretty good for the money and for the specification. And there are bikes that are heavier, but cost a lot more money with higher end equipment, like the Trek Domani, for example. SRAM Force, all with carbon wheels, but 8.5 kilograms, and this is lighter. So if there's a ratio for weight and price, this will score very well. While the bike has mostly impressed, there are a few niggles or downsides. Uh, number one is the Sella Italia saddle, which doesn't agree with my bottom at all. So that's one thing I would change straight away if I buy a bike, but you may be fine with it, but saddles are subjective, everybody's different, but that's one thing I would change. And then there's the biggest, biggest downside on this bike, it's a lack of mudguard mounts, which seems crazy when it's an endurance bike designed for year-round riding and a space for mudguards with such generous tire clearance. So I don't know why they've not put mudguard mounts on it. Maybe it doesn't rain in Germany where roads are based, but I'm sure it does. So not putting mudguard mounts just seems a crazy decision really, a bit of a missed opportunity. I know something that people will point out and say that putting them off buying a bike. One thing that will be a deal breaker for many people, I'm sure, is the press fit bottom bracket and not a threaded bottom bracket. They are at least using a BB86 Shimano Giant standard, which in my experience gives no problems in terms of creaking or reliability or compatibility, so all fine there. But we're seeing a shift back towards threaded with brands like Specialized, Trek, ditching press fit for threaded. 
and some customers and potential customers of bikes like this, I know are looking at the Bosch bracket and almost canceling their buying decision of a new bike because of the press fit. So that's something to factor in. It may be an issue for you, it may not, but yeah, press fit rather than threaded. What do you think? Let me know down below. So to wrap up my video review of the new Rose Reveal, I'm inclined to say it's a really good bike and worthy of your consideration if you're in the market for a bike like this. It's great value for money, it's a good weight for the money as well, and the ride quality is fantastic. Really good smoothness, especially when you're in the saddle. The front end may be a little bit harder than it could be compared to some other rivals, but it still has a nice uh, balance and it's a nice sporty ride as well. If you like to ride in an aggressive manner, uh, sprinting up the hills and so on, and you want that kind of race bike essence, this bike delivers that while still giving you a bit more comfort from bigger tyres and that seat post. And it's not maybe as smooth as some other bikes like a Trek Domani, but if you want a bike that still gives a sprightly ride without being too soft and cushiony, this bike gets that balance right. It's a well-spec bike for money as well, and I think it competes really well with other brands like Canyon or Ribble, who offer excellent value for money, uh, good parts for your money. All the parts on it are well considered. I love the fact you get high quality tires, a stem, handlebar, and a saddle, even though a saddle's not my personal favorite. And the group set works well. The shifting a little bit heavier due to the internal cable routing, which is a compromise, but that's a downside so far with internal cable routing that it does compromise shifting with a mechanical gear setup but you can get used to it. It's not the biggest uh, grievance in the world. And it looks fantastic. I think Rose has done a really good job and it's a bike that in my opinion, looks really good alongside more mainstream popular brands like your Specialized, your Treks, your Candels and Canyons and so on. Comes in three colors. This color looks fantastic on a sunny day like today. It really pops, nice glittery finish. So yeah, it's a bike I can easily recommend. You may have heard of Rose, you may not, but if you haven't, definitely check them out. Go and have a look at the website. And have a look at the bikes because this bike might pleasantly surprise you with its ability and performance and value for money. But that's all for now. Make sure you keep liking, keep subscribing, keep watching, and I'll see you all again next time. Thank you for watching.